we are going to determine coefficient of viscosity of a given liquid by determining the terminal velocity of a spherical body falling in it. What is viscosity? It is fluid friction which is responsible for slow or fast movement of a fluid. Let us observe some fluid here. We have some detergent, mustard oil, some sugar solution, honey, sauce. Observe this. In the spoon here, I am putting some turmeric powder. On top of that, I am putting a spoon of honey. and sprinkle a little bit of red chilli powder on top. I have created the top portion as red and the lower one as yellow because of the turmeric powder. And as I pour this out, observe carefully that the entire liquid does not move together. It seems that the upper layer is moving faster than the lower one. This is forming layered movement of the fluid. This is also called laminar flow. The lower layer moves slower as compared to the topmost layer. It seems that the fluid is moving as laminar. This is called laminar flow. So, viscosity is fluid friction arising between the layers of laminar flow on account of shear strain. This happens because the particles of different layers interact with each other causing friction in its flow, thereby making the layers move with different speeds. Fluid is therefore anything that deforms continuously because of shear forces acting between the layers. Coefficient of viscosity, it is the measure of extent of fluid friction between the layers in laminar flow. It is given as the ratio of shearing stress to the velocity gradient between the layers of the fluid. Its unit is poise or Pascal second or Newton second per meter square. It is represented by eta, it is measured by viscometers and of course coefficient of viscosity for a fluid changes with temperature. This is easy to understand because the density of the fluid is going to change. Let us observe viscosity by making some fluids flow on this glass sheet. Here is the glass sheet and I am going to put some honey on it. a bit of milk near it, a dash of sauce, some sugar syrup, and some water. As you can see, I have honey, milk, sauce, sugar solution, and water. And when I tilt this, the speed at which these flow is quite different. This is on account of viscosity being different for different fluids. We are also going to study the influence of viscosity on a small metal ball falling in different liquids. I have cylinder, glass cylinder here. I can put mustard oil in it. I have another one in which I can put dish washing liquid. Another, another cylinder, I can put some bath gel and 
in another one I can have some detergent. I will pour this inside the cylinder. From the way it is falling you can make out that the viscosity is quite different. Now that the cylinders are filled, this has mustard oil, this has detergent to clean the vessels, dishwasher liquid that is, this is a bath gel and this is a detergent for clothes. Now, I am going to take some lead shots and put them one by one and you are to observe how they go down. So, I take one metal ball and take it first to the mustard oil. I gently put it in the mustard oil. Next we take it to the detergent, the dish washing liquid and I put it in it. You can observe once again. Now we go to the bath gel. I drop the liquid and it seems it is taking forever to go down. Observe very carefully. I will put one more so that it enhances the motion. एक हम और डालने जा रहे हैं आप कैमरा रेडी करोगे तब दिख रही है बहुत धीरे जा रही है कहां दिखेगा सब नहीं आ रहा यहां है एक मिनट हां एक मिनट मैडम जरा सीधा चेहरा करके देखना आप भी ऑब्जर्व कर रहे हैं ना देखो आपको दिख रही है दो है नहीं बोलना नहीं कहां है एक बार उंगली से इशारा करना कहां पर है हां आगे लाइए उंगली एक मिनट एक मिनट अच्छा उंगली हटा दीजिए हां वो आ रही है
ठीक है उतना देख लिया अब आगे चलते सी हाउ स्लोली इट गोज इन दिस बात चेल दैट मीन्स इट्स विस्कोसिटी मस्ट बी वेरी हाई लेट्स ऑब्जर्व द फोर्थ सेलेक्टेड लिक्विड हियर विच इज योर डिटर्जेंट फॉर क्लीनिंग क्लोथ एज आई ड्रॉप दिस इन इट in the clear liquid you can see the shiny ball going down arab haath pa chalao so as you can see the liquid was different so the fluid viscosity was different and the time taken by the metal ball to go right down to the base was also different in the mustard oil and in the dishwasher liquid and the liquid detergent the balls are already at the base but in the bath gel the metal ball is still here Now we are going to do one more experiment. We are going to take some milk and put a few drops in the mustard oil. We are not going to do it with the others because it is all water soluble. So we cannot put milk in it. It will not form a drop. I have a dropper and I put a drop of milk in it. two drops have put observe the spherical ball going down one more in the earlier cases we did not change the radius of the ball because they were metal ball but in this case i can change the radius by taking a larger volume of the drop observe this the speed at which this milk drop goes down is now different so radius matters that means the viscosity influence is also being considered on account of the radius of the falling body they were all perfectly spherical bodies and that is what it was stokes a mathematician and a british scientist in 1851 established a relationship in terms of viscosity of the fluid and the spherical body falling in it he gave a formula mathematical formula relating the radius of the ball and the velocity with which the body was falling in it and the coefficient of viscosity this indeed is the principal and major application for this particular experiment that we are going to do in the lab according to stokes law the viscous drag is equal to 6 pi r eta v where r is the radius of the falling drop eta is the coefficient of viscosity and v is the terminal velocity or the velocity with which the body is falling now what happens is because of this viscous drag which acts opposite to the falling body weight the uh, total forces on the drop get cancelled how is that there are two forces acting in the upward direction which are the up thrust on account of the displaced fluid by the spherical body falling in it and the viscous drag which is according to stokes law developed trying to stop the falling body both these have an upward direction and the force which they are resisting 
is the weight of the body. So, the density of the body, the density of the fluid and the way this speed is increasing as the body falls in it is going to determine a point or at an instant when all the forces on the falling body get cancelled. This particular condition gives you a constant velocity for the falling droplet and that spherical body continues to move with constant speed which we term as terminal velocity. It is this terminal velocity which we are going to determine in this particular experiment. So, in the lab in order to find the coefficient of viscosity of our given fluid which is glycerin, we will require a 1 meter long glass tube which should have a large bore. It should have a meter scale attached to it. This condition for constant velocity or terminal velocity can be mathematically seen by equating the weight to the sum of upthrust and the viscous drag. So, what is the apparatus that we will use in the lab? We have a 1 meter long broad bore uh, glass tube closed at one end, a meter scale attached to it. The entire apparatus is placed on leveling screws so that we hold the glass tube vertical. We require some lead shots, forceps, um, thread, uh, stopwatch with a least count of at least 0.1 second. Other than this, you need a thermometer to note down the temperature of the glycerin that you are working with and of course, sufficient glycerin to fill the 1 meter long tube. As you can see the apparatus, you have 3 positions where the thread is placed. On the top, if you mark that as A, the center one becomes B and the lowermost point is C. The observation table looks like this. You have the temperature of the lab and the rat of glycerin as 33 degrees Celsius. You require density of lead. You are not observing this, but you can read this off from the table given at the back of the book or any other official source. Likewise, find the density of glycerin at 33 degrees Celsius, which for us is 1.25 gram per centimeter cube. The distance between A and B and between B and C is 25 centimeters. This is only after taking couple of observations when you found that the distance traveled and the time taken for it gave you a constant velocity, which is your terminal velocity. The least count of the screw gauge, because you need to find the value for the diameter and that is 0.001 centimeter. Observe your observation table carefully. Observe your observation table carefully. This table is for finding out the time for the ball to fall 25 centimeters that is from A to B and from B to C. So, in the first column you have diameter of the lead ball. So, each time you have taken the lead ball diameter, then the time taken by the lead ball to fall from these two positions, you find the uh, mean and the radius of the lead ball can be calculated, velocity can be calculated and in addition you also calculate the square of the radius. You can use the observation table and your calculation in it to determine the value of eta, the coefficient of viscosity. You can also do it by plotting a graph. For this graph, on the y axis you put the velocity and on the x axis put r square. This will be giving you a line which you will make by choosing points which are closest to the line or an average line, because the value of r square is going to be governed by how accurately you have taken the diameter. Slope of the line can be obtained and use the expression eta equal to 2 by g into density of 
lead minus density of the liquid which in our case is glycerin multiplied by acceleration due to gravity and divide that by 9 and the slope of the line. So, we can use our readings and the calculation that we made in the observation table of velocity as well as r square and put it in our formula which is eta is equal to 2 r square into sigma minus rho into g upon 9 v where sigma is the density of lead, rho is the density of glycerin, v is the terminal velocity which we have just calculated, r square which we have calculated by squaring the radius. We can also find the value for eta that is coefficient of viscosity by plotting a graph. We can also use a graph in order to find the coefficient of viscosity. We can take velocity on the y axis and r square on the x axis. Draw a line, this would be by considering all the points that we have got readings for and finding a mean line. This mean line may look a little odd sometimes because the value of r depends upon how accurately the diameter of the metal uh, lead shot has been measured. So, find the slope of this mean line and put it in the formula eta is equal to 2 upon 9 sigma minus rho into g upon slope of the line. You can report the value for coefficient of viscosity at a particular temperature only. In our case, it is at 33 degree Celsius. What are the sources of error that might arise here? One thing is there that if the uh, glass tube is not held vertical, the metal ball may not have a vertically falling um, line parallel to the sides. The ball should not touch the sides of the glass tube. Otherwise, there will be more than the fluid friction which you are considering and that would cause a lot of error. The diameter should be measured very accurately. You should at all times keep in mind how you are timing. So, your timer has to be switched on and off at, at a particular time and instant. So, a large number of recordings are necessary to be more and more accurate. So, you can take up to 10 to 15 readings and get an accurate value of coefficient of viscosity. This apparatus can be used for some project work also. You can find the density of any fluid that is mass density of any fluid, if you know the density of the falling object in it. You can also find the temperature of the particular uh, lab by determining the viscosity and matching up with the table for that particular liquid that you have selected. You can find the density of milk by dropping the milk in uh, mustard oil and finding terminal velocity and therefore, determining whether the milk is pure or not. You can do a large number of experiments with other viscous fluids like we had seen the detergents and the bath gels and the dishwashing fluids. You can determine the value of viscosity. In turn, you can also understand why these fluids are so viscous. Why should a bath gel be so viscous? Because then you use a very small quantity for cleaning up exercise and that is important for environment, that is important for saving and not putting too much chemical around in the environment. Some suggestions for project work. You can find the viscosity of transparent or translucent liquids, example mustard oil, sugar solution, honey, dishwasher liquid, bathing gel, shampoos. You can check the purity of milk. Use mustard oil in the glass tube and drop milk drops into it. Calculate the density of milk. You can also find the mass density of any unknown fluid. You can do more experiments with the kind of fluids that we have done today. You can also understand why the viscosity of hand washing liquids, detergents is so high because then you use 
very small quantity of it for any useful purpose. 